ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Faces of Carlsbad, coming to you on this wonderful Channel 23. And as you can guess, we're here at the beautiful Blue House, a very nice restaurant where you can buy anything you need to eat or get anything you need to eat. Maybe if you don't have the money, they might even loan you something, <laughs> including excellent coffee, excellent eggs, bacon, the usual good breakfast. You can't miss out on that. And today, we're sitting here enjoying this scenery, and I have a lovely lady as my guest, Kathleen Clark. Kathleen, it's so nice to have you here. Hi, Bob. Thank you and for I having me. And I think probably we should tell people that uh, we, we go back into the history of your grandparents on both sides. Oh, my. <laughs> and uh, your mother and father, where they were born and raised, etc. And then we get to you and your present situation. Okay. 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 So let's start out with your uh, grandparents. My grandparents are uh, on my father's side are of Irish descent, uh, but they were both born in the United States. Mm -hmm. My mother's side were of German origin, born in the United States, and noteworthy, my grandfather was a musician in a citywide uh, orchestra. He was principal chair in a uh, violinist, first chair. What uh, orchestra was In you? the Syracuse Symphony Orchestra in New York. Oh, that's one of the most famous ones in New York State. It could be. Yes. So that's... when my father was dating my mother, he was treated to a lot of um, a combos, people playing, you know, just what young people want to do, sit with the parents and wa and listen to music before they go on a date. <laughs> so. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> we never had that before yeah. <laughs> any of our interviews. So, and uh, they met in what city? Syracuse? Uh, my parents met actually uh, in Cape Cod uh, during the war. My mother and girlfriend were taking a bus, a truck ride into town to see a movie mm -hmm. and they stopped to pick up a couple of soldiers and there was my father so they met in the back of a uh, army truck on the cape cape of good hope cape cape cod cape in cod. in uh, massachusetts yeah. Oh my gosh. yeah so they met there and returned to actually for him to go to college in buffalo new york mm -hmm. and started their family there and that's oh, and where i was born and you were born in buffalo yes it's not too far from where I was, you know, I live from Ohio. And oh, right. That Lake Erie area is not that far. You're a Northeasterner. Yeah, how about that? Mm hmm So anyway, uh, they met, they married, and they settled, and uh, basically, uh, are they still living in that area? Or? They moved back to Syracuse to be closer to their family after a few years of working in Buffalo after college. Yeah and proceeded to have five children. I'm number two, as my father puts it. He, he numbers us all. Oh, is that right? So <laughs> I'm number two, and um, they lived in Syracuse. My mother has passed away now for oh. several years, but my father is 92 and still going strong. He just stopped singing in the Tom Dooley's Irish Coralier that he had been doing it's for many years. Irish Coralier. Tom Dooley. Yes, Tom Dooley, Corlears. That's wonderful. And my mother was also a singer, and they were both very active in uh, choirs in, in church as well. Well, that took a toll, though, when yes. my mother passed away. Yes, yes, she did. At 92 years of age, that's, a, right. that's remarkable. I read an article recently on one of those magazines that they send you for older people <laughs> that... Uh, Tell as, me about that one. Yeah, I don't right. know. As the, the older you get in today's civilization, uh, people, more people are going to be living over the age of 100. Wow. And that in 50 years, it could be up to 110 years of age if the crazy people in the world don't uh, cause a right. massive revolt. And that's the sad part of our society today. There's so many horrible things that are happening to so many nice people. And it's just. Yes. You just have a tough time figuring out what's going on with this world. 
But Dad's still it pretty is. busy, huh? He keeps pretty busy. Dad's busy, yes, and he's a very good elder. He he writes things down, and he uh, he keeps track of things. He writes himself notes, and he he's uh, amenable to our suggestions. You know, maybe maybe you shouldn't be driving so much, or maybe you should you know be careful of this or that around the house. So he's he's a good elder. He has a little notebook in his pocket, and he writes down, like if he goes out to drive, he writes down where he's parked. So then when he comes out of a store, he just takes a look at it and and walks straight to his car while others are looking around, and he gets a big kick out of it. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing, because the older you get, my problem right now is that I forget where I put things. Right. And your dad is far better organized. He started that a while ago, probably thinking that he was going to forget things. And I also noticed that a while ago he started saying to us, I probably told you this before. Mm -hmm. And I thought, why is he using that phrase more and more? Yeah. He realized because eventually he probably would be repeating himself. And he wasn't then, but he started it then. Yeah. <laughs> And, he's, oh. and he still says that. Yeah. I probably told you this before, he says. So I get a kick out of, out of him, and I'm glad to go and spend time with him. Mostly my siblings who live near him look in on him, but I try to go for a month or so and yeah. stay with Dad, and we, we play Monopoly, and we watch programs together, and That's nice. kind of have fun. So you were one of five children? Yes. And uh, what were it, two brothers, two sisters? I have three sisters and one brother. And my sister is a retired nurse. And she more or less takes care of a lot of the family medical issues. Mm -hmm. My other sister is still working with the city in Syracuse in family court, helping people with their family issues. Oh, cool. I have a brother who's a manager of a warehouse, a Rite Aid warehouse takes care of all the supplies for a great big uh, region in the Northeast. In, Buff in, uh, in Syracuse, Syracuse yeah. yes. And then a sister who is a Down syndrome victim and she lives in a group home in the area and has very good care. What causes, what is Down syndrome? Down syndrome is a missing of the one of the chromosomes that we have. Mm -hmm. It's either missing or it's an extra one. I wouldn't say it's an extra one because she seemed to be pretty smart. Yeah. But because of her age, she is in her 50s, she didn't have the advantages that some of the uh, handicapped kids do today. Yeah. They're integrated into schools. They get much more uh, attention. And my mother was kind of a pioneer in, in pushing and advocating for uh, my sister Nellie to go to school, go to a regular school. And Nellie learned to read and write. And one thing that my mother taught her was um, the social graces. Mm -hmm. And Nellie was always a good conversationalist and uh, remembered everyone she met oh until recently when she started getting Alzheimer's. But she was like our little reminder that, you know, you should put people first. And, and she would. She knew everyone remembered everyone and it was a great she, she's a great blessing to us and now unfortunately she doesn't know us anymore but i think maybe deep down she does we still get hugs and kisses from her when we visit but she is going that's a little so, bit downhill yeah that's so sad because mm -hmm. i know a lot of people who've come down with that including famous movie actors yes that's and, right uh, that's right it's it's a disease that you you wonder What's causing this? Because the ones that I know uh, who have it were very, very intelligent people. Right. And all of a sudden now they can't even remember who I am. Right. And they. And I don't blame them. But, uh, <laughs> I don't blame them. But I, I feel so sorry. And what? Yeah. And your husband is pretty busy. I, t I take it. Yes, he came to work for the Whip Project two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. um, he saw it as a project that looked like uh, fun to help be part of the team to resolve after they had the, the fire. Yeah, right. And they needed to decide what caused it, how to clean it up, and how to get it back operating. And he's in the safety end. He's a certified industrial hygienist. So he, 
he just liked the idea of having another project and things to solve. Yeah. But when he came here, of course, as we didn't know, but you probably know, the population comes and goes here, and there wasn't any place to live. So he was put up in a hotel, and I didn't come with him at that time. I decided to go to Florida and remodel a family condo that we will someday inherit oh. that had been in um, the family for probably 30 years. And where, where in Florida? In Sarasota, Florida, Sarasota. which is a beautiful West Coast city. And so I was kind of remodeling from the early Buffalo type furniture, which was the custom to bring down any furniture from the north and put it in your your condo there that you could, but there was, you know, flavors of Florida there, but it needed some refreshing. So I took some time and remodeled that and planned for company to come and host and Jerry would come to visit and our sons would come and visit. And where did I go after that? I think I came out here to visit him mm -hmm. and I thought, hmm, this is different. Oh boy, I'll say it is. <laughs> It's a small town, and I started looking. He said, we have a mall. And so I went to the mall, and I said, okay, there's a Bells or Beals, and there's uh, a couple of private um, clothing stores, the Shade Tree, which is very nice, and Walmart, Cato. I don't know if I'm supposed to be giving billing to these, but no, there are women's fine. stores. So. Um, said it's it's going to take a little getting used to I told my husband as I made plans to go back east and do something else <laughs> well when I came out here in 1957 they had railroad passenger service oh my way down I got off the main train from Akron to Chicago and Chicago to Clovis and at Clovis you got on this one car passenger <laughs> train and uh, I'd never been out west and uh, we arrived in Carlsbad around six o'clock in the evening, and one of the uh, principals in this city uh, from the school, one of the schools, uh, was down there to meet us. And mm -hmm. I got off this air-conditioned passenger train, and the temperature was 106 degrees, and I had never been in heat like oh, that before. Oh, I know. Holy mackerel, what have I gotten into? Yes. But uh, I began to, once I got around, I, I loved this place. Yeah, and I'm used to the heat uh -huh. now. But boy, when when you're not used to it, it really can. Na na right, right. Everyone back east is, uh, you know, wondering how are you doing? How are you doing? I see the numbers there, but one thing I did notice is that the humidity is a lot less. Yes, and that's that's the wonderful. So that helps. Yeah. And uh, then my husband started getting into different activities and so forth, and and he rather likes it here. Yeah. Um, so besides the interesting work, he likes to do target shooting, and they have a beautiful park uh, with stanchions and, and uh, targets set up for all kinds of pistols, rifles, long range rifles, oh, everything. He's, he's into that. Huh? Yeah, and he's gotten me into that, so that's kind of fun. And also archery yeah. and model airplaning now. <laughs> So oh, he's, he's, nice got a, he's got a lot to keep him busy, yeah, flying them. Does he uh, build any of them? He did. Uh, one time he was, he was, he had a Achilles tendon problem and he had a full leg cast. So it's about the only time that we could keep him still and he did build a model airplane mm -hmm. years ago. But usually he wants to be out and going and uh, hiking or biking or doing something active so, so the he tendon, the, tendon's the tendon not healed that was years ago but I said that's when he was doing a model airplane uh -huh. but um, you know usually it's a, an activity you know on the go yeah well what do you like to do to relax well I like swimming reading and like I say I'm getting into this pistol shooting and so forth so that's that's fun uh, and rifle shooting are you pretty good at that well, I think so. I'm getting getting pretty good. And if you yeah. become a better f uh, person with the weapon, <laughs> uh, your husband might say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, I think it makes it equal, you know. Oh, it's, okay. you know, he says, wow, that, that was pretty good. That was kind of right in the middle there. And <laughs> oh, I said, yeah, okay. and then just uh, remember that, yeah. That's fantastic. What yeah. kind of books do you enjoy reading? I like um, mysteries. 
and uh, history books. Yeah. So, and I like, uh, when I was back east, I was doing some archaeology uh, that took place at Fort Edward and Lake George during the uh, time of the war in 1755, mm -hmm. the French and Indian War, they call oh, it. Oh, yes, right. So I was doing some archaeology there, and that was very interesting. So I like to read about that time period, but also, uh, now that I'm here, I want to study the history here of the peoples in the area and the flora and fauna and you know take advantage every place we've lived I'd like to learn what what makes people what do people do here and what can I do here as an experience because we have lived in different areas in the last 10 years we started moving we kind of spent a lot of time in the snow and Syracuse and Buffalo oh, and then yes. and then started moving around and once we came to the south um, we were in the southeast in Knoxville, Tennessee, and Chattanooga, Tennessee, and then in Seattle, Washington. So all those areas we were able to visit the mountains and and check out the cultures of, that are different in, oh. in people from the northeast, and they really are different. Um, you so, mentioned so, Seattle. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. What's that? big tower that they have there that you can look out uh, at? <clears throat> that's a good one. You, All of a sudden it's skipping it, my mind. It's slipping my mind too, so maybe I have that <laughs> illness. No, but I, I know we, we went up there and um, I can't think of the, the well, name I, of the tower right we now. Up, yeah, and got the beautiful view of Seattle. Right. And oh, it's a beautiful right. city. There's another building that actually has a taller view of course, I can't remember that one either, but we would go down to that, um, the tower, and uh, that was the scene of uh, one of the world's fairs. That's right. And, and so the whole area is, is outfitted with a um, science center mm -hmm. and different venues um, and, and areas for festivals. And it seemed like every weekend there was a different ethnic festival going on mm -hmm. so you could go down and you know try French food or Italian food or German food or or whatever besides going down walking down to Pike's Market and getting the great seafood yeah. that just just came in so we took advantage of that well I like Seattle it's a beautiful city and mm -hmm. I think the first thing I did when I got there was to go down on by the ocean front yes and uh, just stood there amazed Right. It just, it just fascinates you. Yes, it does. And then to go out on boats and see, you know, whales and, and that. And we had an opportunity. We used to sail a lot in upstate New York. There are many, there are finger lakes there. So we, we lived near probably seven different lakes within 20 minutes where we could go and we would sail. We were sailboat racers and pleasure sail, sail, sailors. Um, in Seattle, they have a little lake right in the middle of the city, Lake Union. Yes. And they had a wooden boat um, club, and they would uh, work on restoring boats, mm -hmm. but they would also offer the public a chance to either take out a, a canoe or a, uh, a sailboat or whatever. So anyways, we assisted in, in we volunteered there. And, on the docks and also learn, uh, learn to sail there and you had to watch out for uh, ancient Indian canoes or seaplanes or cruise boats oh my gosh. <laughs> on this little lake so it was a little oh. different. Well it's a beautiful city there's no doubt about yes. it. Yes. Right, do you plan to go back to visit uh, in the future? Well we might. We were able to get around and uh, you know see the islands uh, and see uh, British Columbia, University of Columbia uh, British Columbia, and that was beautiful. You like Victoria? We do, yes. I think it's one of the most beautiful living yeah. cities I've ever been. Very beautiful, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's so nice. It makes you feel good just to be around something like that. Mm hmm And uh, you mentioned mystery books. Uh, who's your favorite mystery writer? Do you have a favorite? Well, I was reading Dean Kuntz. He's a good one. Excellent. Uh, Ann Coulter, I think, has... Is it yeah, Ann my Coulter? wife is involved yes. in her books too. Yes. Yeah. So I like that. 
Mm -hmm. That keeps you relaxed for a while. Oh yes, yeah. It just takes you it takes you into it and away from any any paperwork. I'm in charge of all the family paperwork. Oh, is that so, right? Oh. So you know, we have some uh, one house that we uh, gutted and rebuilt uh, together. Mm -hmm. We still own in in Syracuse. It's near a little lake there. And we kind of hate to give it up, but it's been rented out. But I, I kind of missed that. Yeah. I forgot where this was going. But um, um, that was one of our projects that we have. Well, and that one in Florida. Oh, yeah, redoing that one. So we have a couple possibilities. So I don't know if we'll stay here or, or where we'll go next. My husband has, he thinks about uh, a couple more years at this project. Mm -hmm. And like I say, I come and go. Uh, I, I'll go to central New York probably in the summer. I have a son in Atlanta, so I enjoy the big city there, visiting him and his, my grandchildren. So different times I go and watch them. Well, in a few moments that we have left, uh, anything exciting you want to tell us about? <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm getting used to the low key atmosphere of Carlsbad and it's uh, I'm looking forward to to meeting the people and seeing what what brought them here and and why they're here and um, I think it's you know it's a good opportunity for my husband and myself well you have a, a very nice they've got a wonderful opinion of you at the <laughs> shop downtown that oh. pats me out because <laughs> you came in and right away you started volunteering your work. Oh. And they are mm -hmm. really so happy to have you. Well, they're a dedicated bunch down there, and they seem to get along and do a good job, and it's pretty busy down there, so it well, serves the community well, I think. You have, uh, with only 30 seconds left, do you have any <laughs> favorite pets? Favorite pets? Yeah, like cats or dogs? I or think I animal? like the cats. <laughs> cats more than the dogs. Their dogs are, we're a little noisy, but, you know. Well, people own dogs, but cats own you. That's right. I know, because I have <laughs> You have one, or yeah. she has you. That's yes. Right. Well, I want to thank okay. you, Kathleen, for being our guest today, and it's been a real pleasure. You're welcome. Glad and, to uh, be here. I'll see you. Thanks, Bob. I'll, I'll see, see you around at the Cat's Meow, oh, huh? absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> On behalf okay. of uh, all of us here at the beautiful Blue House, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> don't forget, come down in the morning and have a good cup of coffee and a nice... Croissant. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Yes. My French is not that good. On behalf of Channel 23 and the faces of Carlsbad, all I can say to our wonderful viewers is goodbye and good luck. And we can shake hands for our